So what do you bet when you've got a Power Five conference going up against one of those uh, other conferences? Or how about when you get two Power Five conferences battling? We've got answers to those questions and more as we are getting ready for a weekend filled with college football. So, Duana, you're going to kick us off here today. This is one of the few, uh, you know, Power Five versus Power Five, same conference, ACC, Clemson taking on Duke. What are you going to do? Lane 13 is what this Clemson team is. How are you approaching this one? You know, I have not bet this one yet. I'm leaning Clemson, laying anything under two touchdowns. But if it goes to 14, I might go the other way and take Duke. Uh, as they say, we're betting numbers, not teams. Uh, a large part of my football handicapping method is situational. And a lot of that situational aspect has to do with the team's most recent game or games. Uh, but since this is game one for these guys, I have nothing that's of situational importance to me uh, to draw from. Uh, these schools haven't met on a football field in five years so I don't even have a recent matchup to gather any info from. Uh, Clemson was in the college football playoffs six straight years, uh, but has not made it each of the last two years. And that can't sit well with Dabo Swinney. Uh, so I'm expecting him to have Clemson ready to come out swinging Monday night. Uh, Swinney brought in Garrett Riley from TCU to revamp what had become a stagnant Clemson offense. Uh, and while I think that winds up being a good move, I don't know if I'm willing to lay two touchdowns on the road uh, in game one of that new offense. Uh, and, you know, and let's give Duke its due. You know, they went 9-4 and four in Mike Elko, uh, Elko's debut season last year. Uh, that was good enough to earn him ACC Coach of the Year honors. Uh, he gets most of his offense back this season, including QB Riley Leonard. It, it's hard to bet against a home dog that has 17 or 18 starters returning. Uh, these teams normally do pretty well in Week 0 and Week 1 games. Uh, Mark Lawrence tells us the college football home dogs and season openers who return 17 or more starters are 43, 16, and 1 against the spread since 1990 if they won three or more games the previous season, uh, including 12 and 2 against the spread if they're a dog of more than 12 points. Clemson clearly has the talent to win and cover this game, uh, but there's two question marks for me. One, does Clemson run that new offense effectively enough in game one on the road uh, to win by that margin? And two, if Clemson does have a decent late margin, can Riley Leonard lead the Duke offense to a backdoor cover with a late touchdown? Uh, and I definitely think he can. Uh, and that's the other reason that I haven't made my move yet on this game. Uh, and I don't know if I will. Numbers are numbers, right? Gets to that two touchdown mark. Uh, might leave us no choice but to jump in on it. It's go not going to be, I, I don't think we're going to get uh, that big a difference in Brian Leonard's uh, game here. And by the way, guys, if uh, if college football is what you like and you love this kind of content, game previews, best bets, props, you name it, we've got you covered here at Wager Talk TV. Just go ahead, hit the subscribe, hit the like button uh, when you can. And I'm telling you all, the college football knowledge you need to be profitable this year is just a click away. We are not going to get a 14-point spread in LSU Florida State. I, at least I don't think so, uh, Brian Leonard. But many people have circled this game, including LSU uh, and Florida State, who met it a year ago at this time. So what are you going to do in, in this kind of feels like a pick em kind of game? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm old enough where I don't get overly excited about certain games. Uh, but if you're looking at the week one games, I got to think this is the premier game for week one. Uh, it's being played in Orlando, so there's no home field advantage for either of the two teams. So it's it's relatively equal distance wise. And uh, you've got two projected heavyweights going against each other here. Keep in mind, last year, Florida State won 24 to 23. And this game projects to be just as tight if you take a look at the current line of LSU at two, two and a half point favorite so we're looking at a very similar game to last year and if it comes out that way it'll be an exciting game to watch uh lsu's had the top transfer class a year ago and they rank in the top five again this season but they did lose to texas a&m and georgia to end their conference play last year before blowing out purdue in the bowl game um, lsu struggled on the offensive line a season ago but that's expected to be a strength this season they've been talking about being uh really strong on the offensive line We'll see what happens against this strong Florida State defense. But LSU signed 
five four-star recruits in the passing game. So this offense should be really dangerous. And the defense looks just as strong as last year. And overall depth on both sides of the ball, I think, has improved for the LSU Tigers. Florida State's expected to win the ACC this season, and for good reason. As, as this squad is loaded on both sides of the ball, the three losses last year were by two, six, and ten points. The Seminoles brought in an elite transfer class, which makes this team even deeper. This is a team that was fourth in the nation in pass defense a year ago, and both teams have excellent pass attacks. But the uh, elite pass defense comes with both teams. Both teams are looking for the opposition to pass, and both teams want to pass. So this is going to be a really good battle for two teams that I have rated very equal. In fact, my power rating has LSU minus one here. So it's a slight lean to Florida State. If I can catch a full three, and uh, Dwayne talked about key numbers and numbers that we're playing with. If I can catch a three, I'll be on Florida State. If not, I'll be happy to just sit back, watch, and learn from two of the best in the nation. In the Bayou in last year's game, in Orlando in this year's games. Well, Jimmy, what are you thinking here? We've got uh, San Jose State, in which we just watched. I thought they did a pretty admirable job against USC. Now they come home, game two. So what are we going to do? in this matchup here. Yeah, Joe, so we have a situation Sunday where a good Oregon State team's being asked to go on the road and lay a bunch of points. The problem is San Jose State's just not a team you wanna lay a big number against because the Spartans can flat out score. They already have a game under their belt, which is big, you know, get the jitters out and all that. And let's not forget, it was a seven point game at halftime at USC, a team a lot of people think's headed to the college football playoff. Uh, quarterback Chevon Cordero was named the Mountain West preseason offensive player of the year for a reason. He threw for over 3,200 yards a season ago with 23 TDs and just six picks. And he and Nick Nash were in sync last week. Three TDs from the duo, zero turnovers in the game for San Jose. They almost matched USC in first downs, 24 to 25. Oh, and Cordero is also a dual threat quarterback. He rushed for 52 as well against the Trojans. Um, so I agree with you, Joe. I thought they did an admirable job. Oregon State only returns five starters on defense. And are they really going to be able to hold da down San Jose enough to cover this big number on the road? And will the offense do its part as uh, DJU gets, uh, starts his second coming in Corvallis there? A unit, an offensive unit that averaged 29.3 points per game in 2022. That's good, but it's not nearly good enough to cover this heavy chalk on the highway. By the way, San Jose averaged 28. The Beavers are not going to cover this number against an underrated Spartan offense. Put the points in your pocket. Take San Jose State. Yeah, well, he, he couldn't cut it in, in Clemson. Now he's going to go uh, you know, and, and turns to the Beavers. That's where he's going here. We'll see uh, how that rolls out for him here. But those are three uh, very intriguing matchups uh, coming up here, guys. We now have three best bets, though, of the remaining games in this week one schedule in college football. So go ahead, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you love content like this. We got much more of it coming all season long here at Wager Talk TV. So let's switch it back to you here, Dwayne, for a, uh, a best bet. Some new faces in town. One of them happens to be... Dion Sanders as a coach at Colorado. What do you do with this uh, laying the 20 and a half with TCU in this matchup? Well, unlike my first game, I did bet this game. I released it to clients as a 3% play, which is my normal size wager. Uh, and I laid the 20 and a half with TCU. Um, look, I mean, I have no doubt that Dion Sanders is going to turn around that Colorado program, but it just is not going to happen right out of the gate. I mean, Sanders absolutely gutted that Colorado roster, uh, and he has what amounts to a whole new team there in Boulder. Uh, and that kind of roster turnover is just unheard of, and there's a really good reason why. Uh, you know, teams with a lot of new pieces, uh, and that's an enormous understatement for the Buffs, uh, teams like that just need time to gel. Uh, going on the road and playing a team that was in the national title game last season – just seems like way too big of an ask in game one of the Sanders era here. Uh, and, and I know TCU has had some roster turnover as well, uh, including QB Max Duggan. Uh, but the difference is most of TCU's replacements have actually been in the program and they know the systems well. 
Uh, speaking of TCU quarterbacks, Chandler Morris originally beat out Duggan for the starting QB gig. Uh, and Morris actually started the game against Colorado last year before getting hurt. Uh, bottom line for me, um, I'll be surprised if Colorado can keep this close in game one with an almost completely overhauled roster and in a hostile environment on top of that. Uh, on the TCU side, there's no look-ahead game for them. Uh, they only have an FCS school on deck, uh, so there's absolutely no reason for them to keep things vanilla uh, or play it close to the vest. Uh, so I laid it with TCU. All right, outstanding stuff there, uh, Dwayne. Make sure you guys check out Dwayne at wagertalk.com. And also, uh, drop us a comment uh, below in the comment section. Tell us what is your best bet as we wrap up this week one in college football. And if you happen to have any questions, by the way, about any of these games or any other games you're thinking about betting, I'd encourage you guys to drop them below in the comment section because not only Dwayne, but Brian Leonard and Jimmy Adams, uh, they'll be monitoring here uh, all weekend long, answering all those questions that you might have. So drop them in the comment section. As we head over to Brian Leonard, what are you cooking up for us in a best bet situation? I'm going back to the uh, same game that Dwayne had chosen here. And regardless if you're going to have a play on this game, I think this is a game you need to watch. Uh, Colorado has had so many changes in the offseason that you need to know what's happening with that team going forward. Uh, this has got to be a must-watch game because of that. And uh, when looking at unit ranks in the Pac-12 this year, we find Colorado ranking fifth in the running back position eighth or worse everywhere else. Uh, the Buffs have just one player, defensive back Travis Hunter, who also plays offense once in a while, uh, who rates in the top two in the league at their position. Um, so you've got a lot of Colorado players coming in. We'll see how that works out. Uh, they made many moves for the transfer portal, including four solid additions defensively. But you really have to wonder, with all these changes in Boulder this season, new coach coming in, uh, new coaching staff, all these new players, it's going to take time to gel, as Dwayne said in his analysis. And there has to be some static between those players who stayed through the coaching change and all these new players coming in. It may take them a little bit while to trust each other. Uh, that's always a concern. Deion Sanders brought in the top transfer class in the nation, including his son, Shador, who's going to lead the offensive quarterback. Uh, the offense will be running at what they call a flash, fast pace which could really give them an advantage when they play in the altitude of Boulder. They won't have that advantage in this game here. Uh, having new schemes on both sides of the ball should come with problems. This could be a competitive team by the end of the season, but there are just too many questions right now, too many changes to want to back them coming out of the gate. Uh, TCU was a surprise team last season, obviously, going all the way to the national championship. Sonny Dykes and his team dominated offensively in his first year. They stymied everyone last year, including myself, many times by finding ways to win close games week after week, while many wise guys bet against them to no avail. That impressed me as the season went on. If you can win in bad scheduling situations, that tells me you've got a good team, you've got a good coach, and that's somebody I'd be looking to back. Uh, TCU's had to replace a good amount of that offense, but the coaching staff has proven their ability to continue that success. And unlike in the past, the transfer portal makes it much easier to rebuild and the Horned Frogs have done just that. Uh, say what you want about Kendall Bryles, but he's one of the most talented offensive minds in football. We don't expect much of an offensive drop-off, even without Max Dugan, who was cut by his NFL team. I really like this guy. I hope he catches on somewhere else. Uh, he's got a lot of heart, and he's a guy you really want to root for. Uh, defensively, this team is once again stacked, and should really feast against this brand-new Colorado scoring unit. I'll take TCU, and a lot of people will be probably looking to fade them after the lucky year they had last year uh, by a lot of metrics, similar to the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. But I think they're going to have a lot of success, and especially against this new team with a lot of new players. Uh, give me TCU minus the points, sir. And, of course, uh, we're talking about a lot of new faces. Jimmy Adams, for a best bet, um, Purdue's got a few new faces, got a new coach. I uh, got a new everything really there. Taking on Fresno State. What are you thinking about in this matchup for the Boilermakers? Yeah, staying in the Mountain West, Fresno State's going to be today's best bet as they head to West Lafayette. They're an absolute live dog. Uh, like Joe mentioned, Purdue's undergoing a major transition at multiple positions. 
They have a new head coach. Ryan Walters comes over from Illinois. His main focus is going to be on the defensive side. 11 starters return for the Boilermakers. Uh, actually, 11 starters return for both teams, but it's going to be an easier transition for Fresno, and I'm going to tell you why. So only two starters come back for Purdue on the offensive line and only five on defense. Aiden O'Connell's gone. Hudson Card's going to try and step in and take his place. But like I mentioned, this is going to be a defensive-minded team, especially in the early going. So Fresno State did lose a lot on offense as well. Mikey Keene's going to get the start, and he'll be just fine. Jeff Tedford does a great job with quarterbacks. We all know that. But this game's going to be one in the trenches and on defense. The Bulldogs return four starters on the offensive line, one of the best lines in the Mountain West, definitely. They'll be able to move the chains with the solid running back core that they have every year. Fresno State ranked 13th in the nation in points per game allowed a season ago, and they returned seven on that side. So when you return guys on a very good defensive unit and you return most of your offensive line, it's much easier to transition than when you're trying to put all the pieces together like Purdue is. You don't want to be laying more than a field goal as this Purdue team tries to get things figured out. Uh, Fresno State for this week's free play best bet. Well, there you go. Uh, Fresno State uh, heading out, uh, taking on Purdue. Fresno it is for Jimmy Adams. And there you have it. I, we've gone over a handful of games here. But the good news is if it's uh, game previews you want, it's game previews we have for you. Just go ahead, click on the video on the screen right now, and you'll see a whole lot of other best bets and game previews this week as we look forward to wrapping up week one in college football. Good luck.